Welcome. Hello, computer cooks. Welcome back to Retro Recipes. Retro with a twist. And today the twist isn't raspberry Pi or even apple, you silly goose. Today is the delicious taste, the fruitful aroma of your Amiga. No, I mean, your Amiga, yes. Mm, tastes a bit odd, actually. Anyway, in a recent episode, I looked at some mysterious Amiga 500 faults and also did some chip mem modification, and that episode generated a lot of interest. So this week, I'm going to be looking at some even cooler mods created by my talented friend, friend of Retro Recipes, Pete, aka. Whoa, that's really cool. I wish my theme tune was that cool. You know what? Maybe it can be. Welcome to Retro Recipes. So what do you do when you have not just one Amiga 500, but a whole pile of Amiga 500s? Let's call this the Leaning Tower of Amiga. <clears throat> well, you can neatly organize them and start retrobriting the keyboards, creating a sort of retrobriting production line, and then move on to retrobriting a stack of the cases. But I think there's a lot more we could do with this. Let's take a look. So what better to go with a pile of Amiga 500s? Well, a pile of GoTech drives, of course. In a recent video, I installed a GoTech mount, which let me put the GoTech drive inside the Amiga 500 in the floppy disk slot. And that was pretty good, but I think it's time to go one better. Let's see if we can mount the GoTech just here under a real floppy disk drive. So let's start off by making some holes in the case. Usually I'm not a fan of doing this, but this end result I think it's going to be worth it. We'll file down in between those holes to make a nice rectangle. And before long we can slot the GoTech drive in. And it fits neatly under the floppy disk drive. Here's how neatly. But the whole point of this is we want to be able to use a floppy drive and a GoTech drive. Not at the same time, but to just be able to switch between them. This is the 5 volt power in of the GoTech drive. So let's illustrate this. Let's assume we've got our 5 volts power. And we're going to attach it not to the drive, but to this switch. This is known as an SPDT switch. And that means single pole dual throw. Literally, it has one pole coming in, one wire coming in, and dual wires coming out, as we all do. Then we're going to run a wire from the switch to that 5 volt line of the floppy drive, and a second one to the GoTech drive. And then by flicking this switch, it diverts that 5 volts either to the floppy or to the GoTech. And that way the other device becomes invisible to the Amiga. No offense intended. And then you just daisy chain the drives with a double ribbon connector similar to this. So let's find a place for that switch. I think just about here should be nice. And here's the finished result. We got our five volt wire running into that switch. And here's how it looks to the outside world. What are those other switches and holes, you ask? Well, patience, well, we'll get to that. First, let's just test out this switch. So that's our floppy drive working. We'll flick the switch, stick in a USB dongle, well, thumb drive. And yes, it loads up beautifully. Ooh. Don't worry, puppy, no cats on this channel. Presents what? 
Oh, that's my own title. <laughs> well, this is an SD card adapter that my mate Pete manufactures, but he also makes other things. And in a recent unboxing, I showed you these Amiga S video output mods. So we're going to be concentrating on the Amiga 500 one here. You can see it gives you a composite out and an S video out. And you've even got a PAL NTSC jumper here. By the way, if you ever get into making these kind of PCBs and want to prototype them, I recommend PCB Way. They've been helping me with an upcoming Commodore 64 project. And as we all know, PCB Way in Geordie is PCB Way Iron Man. <clears throat> yeah. So back to the PCB in question. As you can see here, we've got our five volt sync, blue, green, and red through holes. All we're gonna do is wire cables from the five volt sync, blue, green, and red solder points on the Amiga 500 board. We'll do it on the underside of the board to keep things tidy up front. So then we just need a place for this mod to go. It's been designed specially to go right here, again, under the drive. We've got just the tool for the job, apart from me. So again, we'll make a hole with a special tool. Make a hole, everybody, make a hole. Actually, we'll make two holes and use a file midway to straighten it up. And here's how the finished result looks. Let's test it out. Here's composite. And best of all, S video. It's as sharp as a crow called Sharpie McSharp face standing on a razor's edge, sharpening his pencils. It's okay. Come back. You're not scared. It's okay. Great reflexes there. Well, in an earlier video, I showed you this chip memory mod that you can do, but it's a little tricky on earlier motherboards. But these motherboards, they've got holes just waiting for extra RAM, kind of crying out to be used. Here's why you'd want to do that modification. You see, chip RAM can access the Agnes, Denise, and Polar chips for video and audio directly without going through the CPU. Now, if you have a vampire card, you won't need to do this mod, but these things are expensive. So we're going to upgrade these 20 Amigas with the chip mem mod. And in that recent video, I showed you doing it on a revision 5A, which is a little trickier. So this should be a bit easier. So all we do is cut the trace between JP2 blobs 2 and 3, and put a solder blob between blobs 1 and 2. Oh, sorry, seem to be picking up some interference there. And then on JP7A, we cut that trace between 2 and 3. And this actually just disables the expansion port. And that will allow the mod to work. Hackification complete. But in this case, instead of Mr. and Mrs. Blobby, we're going to use a switch so that you can turn that modification on and off for maximum compatibility. All right, we've soldered in all the memory. Let's test it out. There you go, one megabyte showing as planned. Brilliant. As Jack Tremel said, it just works. Oh, well, that was someone else, wasn't it? Well, with all that done, we have a bit of a problem with one of these boards. This flipping guru meditation keeps coming up. A lot of time was spent meditating on this issue. And, well, by that I mean Googling. And turns out the issue can stem from the blimmin' fat agonus. You see, there's two types of chips made in the Philippines and the USA. And the USA variant can, unfortunately, be a little slack. These pins don't protrude as far as they should. So let's just even them all up using a watch screwdriver and clean up that socket. Hey, and guess what? Those crashes went away. Bye-bye, guru. Well, it's nearly time to say bye-bye from me as well. Not, I'm not a guru, but I think we'll just finish up some of these Amigas with some beautiful case mods.
Well, there you go. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Now, do you want to try out some of those mods yourself? Do you want to flick those switches? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to buy some of the video mods or other things you've seen, I'll put all the links in the description below where you can get those. By the way, I put out content like this almost every week, so make sure you subscribe and ring my bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, before I go, as you know, the Amiga does some pretty incredible video feats. Uh, you've seen some of those fantastic demos and the blitter chip, etc. But did you know that cleaning the Amiga's metal shielding can produce equally fantastic results? I'll leave you with that footage. Thanks for watching and cheerio.